Our first guest tonight is an Oscar and Emmy-nominated actor you know from shows like The Office and The Morning Show, as well as the films The 40-Year-Old Virgin and Foxcatcher. He stars in Minions, The Rise of Gru, which opens in theaters July 1st. Let's take a look. You seriously think a puny little child can be a villain? Um, yes, I, I am pretty despicable. You don't want to cross me. Evil is for adults who steal powerful ancient stones and wreak havoc. <gasps> and not for tubby little punks who should be at school. Please welcome to the show Steve Carell, everybody! <laughs> Pleasure. You know, um, obviously you're this uh, accomplished comedian, accomplished voice actor. We first met in 2005 when you hosted SNL, and we wrote a sketch. It was a, a Hurricane uh, Katrina celebrity benefit, and we just assumed we've got Steve Carell. He must have a million celebrity impressions. That was mm, not the case. Not the case. Yeah. And we no. literally said it could be anyone. Right. And you said, I have no one. I have, I don't do impressions. <laughs> Terrible. And you remember what we came up with? Uh, Ray Romano. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will say, we have a still of it. You ended up looking more like Ray Romano than I thought you could. <laughs> There's that, I'm Anderson Cooper, and there you are. That's a very. <laughs> and I was terrified because, you know, I'd never done an impression, and <laughs> SNL is predicated on <laughs> yeah. impressions. So. <laughs> The first rehearsal, I just kind of whipped out, uh, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of did that to my voice. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I think of, that was the extent of it, too. That was it. Yeah. I think everyone realized, oh, we can't give him dialogue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's better than I remember. I will say it's a lot better than I remember. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Would, do people, when you, I mean, first of all, this is a, a raised level of difficulty here with this group. Now you've got to do a kid group. Oh, so hard. So hard. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do people I'm being ever facetious? Do people ever? <laughs> it's really not hard. Do people ever say to you, "How do you come up with your funny voices?" Never. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. I think anyone can do Gru. Really? I really, I shouldn't say that because oh, I'll yeah. be out of a job. Because they could probably get it. Well, it... I've been doing this like all this promotional stuff, and one of them is like people calling in and trying to do the Gru voice. And I coach them, like, it's down here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and then they, people are quite good at it. And <laughs> Little Gru is just more earnest and higher. Yeah. He's kind of like this. Were you excited when they told you it was time to do Little Gru? Did you think, oh, we're going to switch it up a little bit? Finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I thought an origin story was a good idea, especially since it's set in the, uh, in the 70s. Yeah. And I th just the nostalgia of that, I think you can really lean into it. And I think parents are going to really dig it, grandparents too. Well, that's the really important thing about when you make these kids' movies, the ones that I think are beloved are ones that adults can also enjoy. So when you put anything in there that they can hold on to, because you can't send a kid to go see Gru on their own. <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. Although, you know, when my kids were little, I used to sit and watch, you know, kid shows with them. And there were times that they were out of, they'd walked out of the room and I was still watching <laughs> like iCarly. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what's gonna happen? And, 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 I, I, and I enjoyed it. <laughs> there, like, Did you worry about uh, your children that they were so dismissive of the outcome of, of iCarly, <laughs> their fate? No, I hadn't even considered that. <laughs> I, I clearly don't keep track of my kids. You're, um... <laughs> I know you to be a man of great empathy, and I want to ask you this, because when you do press for a movie like this, you are often with minions. And when oh, I say that, yeah. you know, these are obviously, I don't need to tell you, these are people in minion suits. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve, a lot of times, this is a summer film, you're out, there, it's pretty hot when you're doing minions press. You know this day? Yeah. It was really hot. <laughs> and this other day, it was the same. <laughs> Super hot. Do you ever, can you ever tell that the, uh, the the human beings inside the minion suits are getting a little hot? Um, yeah, I, they start to, they start to sputter a little bit. <laughs> it's, we did this promo where I, I did uh, uh, this soccer promo with uh, a soccer player from Mexico named Chicharito. And 
So we did this little bit, and there were minions on his team, and these great you know, soccer players on my team, and they were gonna have a soccer game. And it was in LA, and it had to have been 95, 100 <laughs> degrees. And the, these people in the minion suit were, I mean, they're kicking the ball and running around. And <laughs> where did the minions go? So they had wrangled the minions around the corner where none of the kids could see. And all I saw like were minion costumes sort of like tipped over <laughs> and like arms and legs of human beings like hiding behind bushes, like drinking water. It was really, it's, it's yes, it's a lot. It's a level job. Of, of professionalism that you have to appreciate when you're inside, when you're an actor inside a minion suit and you know you can't, you can't lie down in the middle of the field because there are a lot of kids there. They no, don't no, want to no. see a minion go down. No, right. no, exactly. <laughs> no. You have to you have to keep your, your appearances up. Uh, what was your? I mean, again, it's weird when you do a voice for an animated thing. I mean, I, I'm sure obviously you see drawings in advance, but you don't see a finished product until a lot of people do. What was it like the first time you had the idea of minions explained to you? I thought, good luck with that, <laughs> because well, they you know they showed me a picture and I thought, well. Sure, there are these cylindrical yellow objects that have either, they have goggles, maybe one eye, maybe two eyes. It was explained to me they don't speak English, they speak in a gibberish, so you can't really understand them, and they're hilarious. <laughs> I thought, all right, well, good, good for you guys. That's a, and, and it turned out to be a stroke of genius. Yeah. Like I, you, I saw that first movie, I saw the finished product, and you know, you're, you're in a, a, vo a booth and you're, you're doing it pretty much solitary. You, don't, you never see any cuts of it, you, never, you don't know what the movie's gonna look like until you go see it. And it was magical. You, um, uh, your early acting, I did not realize this, you did some, um, like some, some revolutionary war uh, reenacting? Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't, you took this seriously. You learned to play an instrument. I did, yeah. My brother and I joined, I grew up in a town outside of Boston, and all of these little towns had their own Minuteman cores. And it wasn't really for reenacting. It's like mostly parades and, yeah. you know, the 4th of July, back in Massachusetts, we have something called Patriot's Day. And so, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. And, and so did my brother. So he learned to pr play the drum and I learned how to play the fife. <laughs> and so we got dressed up in our little costumes and we went out and, and marched around and that was kind of it. Later on, I, I had acquired more of a, an interest in history. So I joined the British 10th Regiment of Foot, which was much more serious. <laughs> And that's when I was old, like in high school. And like they would cast the buttons from the same molds that the original buttons were cast back then. <laughs> and so I kind of geeked out and got into it. And we, did you have to have a certain level of, of fife playing? Was this the kind of group that if you were shaky on the fife, they wouldn't have if you? you? If you could kind of play the fife <laughs> and you were amenable to dressing up like a British <laughs> grenadier, <laughs> they would have you. <laughs> That's quite a good advertisement for it, membership. It, it was. It was fun. Yeah. It was. You That's know. a cool thing to do. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Don't say that. I mean, everyone out there is going, a cool thing to do? That, that kid must have been a winner in high school. <laughs> I enjoyed it. It worked out all right. It, it was, worked out for it you did. all right. And I can still play the fife. Can you really? Yes. Wow. Have you had any reason wow. to? Wow. That was the most insincere wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh my God, what's that? Oh no, <laughs> I gotta go to commercial. I'd love to hear more about this fight. Five? We. <laughs> you guys, that's Steve Carell. I wish we had a fight. I wish we had a fight. Minions, the right.